training and today in homemade science we're going to take a look at some simple string shooters. Now some of these are human powered, some of them are quite a bit larger, but they're all easy to build and quite a bit of fun. So let's get started. So the original string shooters were actually powered by air. As far as I can tell, they dated back to at least the 1950s, and they were sold as a toy called a string pipe. Here's an older version, and here's a 3D printed version that was found online. This one works well also, but I think the best idea is to build a simple one for yourself. They can be made out of plastic or paper straws and some yarn. Here's the smallest one I have. It was made with a coffee stirrer and some thread. Of course, the largest straw is not going to last as long. To make one, use something like an ice pick, pencil, or nail to make a hole in the straw, but insert it on an angle. The idea is to bend the back end of that hole inwards. This is critical to it working well, and I'll explain why later. After feeding the string through the straw, the two ends need to be joined together. My personal preference is to use heat, so I'm going to put some tape over my thumb and finger, use a little bit of hot glue, dip the ends in, stick them together, and then roll it into as small a joint as possible. Another possibility is to heat the ends in a candle flame. Now let's give it a quick test. And it works. <laughs> now if I want to go larger, I can switch to using a PVC pipe and some thicker yarn, but my lungs just aren't going to be strong enough. So in this case, I'm going to switch to the exhaust from my shop vac and let's see what happens. Here's three strings at once. Of course, just like the smaller ones, the PVC pipe needs that restriction at the back end of the hole. To form it, I heated the area with a torch and then pushed it in and held it there until it cooled. Now if that's too difficult, here's one that's made out of a cardboard tube. This one was the easiest to build and it works really well. But by far my favorite piece is this one made out of a clear plastic tube. It's thin and flexible. I simply drilled a hole through it and then added the loop of yarn. What I like about this clear tube so much is it helps to explain that first part of our demonstration, the need for that constriction behind the hole in the tube. In the straight pipe, the yarn doesn't move, but pushing in behind the hole causes a constriction and the string starts to fly. Notice when I release the constriction, the string stops. Now, if I want these to work without squeezing them, I can make a constriction that's going to slide inside that tube. I cut a small section out of a short piece of tubing, heated it, and bent it upwards to make that constriction. I then cut the tube lengthwise so it will fit inside the other tube. I covered it with black tape so we could see it better. Well, now that we see that that works, I think it's time to try some bigger material Go a little bit longer, and for that we're going to need a little bit more power. I thought it was impressive to get a loop that was 30 feet long, but then I tried 40 feet of string, and that worked just as well.
Now let's take a look at what's happening in the pipe and then in the air. In a straight pipe, the airflow is fairly uniform. In this case, it's about 80 miles an hour. When a hole is added, some of that air will escape to the outside. Notice what it does to this falling stream of sugar. Adding the constriction causes the air to move faster through that confined space. It also causes an area of reduced pressure. So air outside the pipe is going to be drawn into the pipe and into that airflow. Notice the sugar is now drawn into the pipe. We can apply the same behavior to the string to help draw it inside and get caught in that airflow. It's an example of Bernoulli's principle in action. I think the airflow is giving just enough push to that string to help it overcome the friction at that hole. So now that I've mentioned what happens inside the tube, perhaps I should mention that the tube isn't actually needed. It just makes it easier. I can do the same demonstration with the loop and something for it to turn on. All we need to do is catch that string in the airflow. So our next question is, why does the string actually fly? It's actually a battle between lift versus gravity. The lift is actually being provided by the drag of the string in the moving air. With a stationary string, the drag is in the same direction as the airflow. The drag force is a lot more than I had expected, but even with a large amount of drag, none of the stationary strings could provide lift for more than a short distance. Now when the loop is moving, the airspeed is about five times faster than the speed of the string. So even with it moving, the drag is still in the direction of the flowing air. As the string returns to the pipe, it produces lift as it travels through stationary air. The strings have to be light enough, this one isn't. And of course they have to move fast enough. Here's what happens when the airspeed is reduced. Interesting how the top flight becomes chaotic, while tension on the bottom string keeps it nice and smooth. We can increase the amount of lift a few different ways. One is to change the amount of drag. Here's a smooth string in that airflow. Not much lift at all. But here's the same string run over a piece of sandpaper a few times. Those little fibers give it more surface area, more friction, so we get more lift. So with string shooters, the fuzzier the string is, the better it's going to fly. Now let's take a look at my best example. Here's some unbraided yarn that I found. It's extremely light and it's got a lot of surface area. The pipe is made with a PVC T connection and the constriction was made to slide into the one end. Now this is what I call cotton candy. I thought of my search for materials that I might try this one. That's good. That's now good. my friend Steve likes to shoot toilet paper during his science shows. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't let go, don't let go, don't let go, go. Get that in person right there, just get it, just get it, just get it. Up and up. One more. Now unfortunately over the last couple of years there have been shortages of toilet paper, so I thought he might want to change his equipment slightly. Here's a pulley made out of a cardboard tube and it fits over the paint roller. This way it could actually be recycling the paper.
Well, that was fun. I think with some better paper and a leaf blower, I could get a lot more distance out of it. I'd love to hear what you thought, and as always, I want to thank you for watching. Okay, bye.